So while I was traveling and doing some master classes, um, Rocco's vet was keeping me up to date every single evening. And if she wasn't calling me personally, then one of the students at the university was calling me with an update and things were just kind of up and down, but looking pretty hopeful. They got the monitoring um, apparatus to work on his thigh. They got a total of, I think, four or five days of data collection from that. That thing's pretty darn cool. And I think it has a battery life of two weeks and then a lifetime life of about two or three years. I wanna, I can't totally remember now off the top of my head, but um, pretty amazing little device. And they found that it was more accurate than how they were testing. So this little thing was making a huge difference on being less invasive. So he wasn't getting poked and prodded too much, which I think made a huge difference. And um, my vet actually told me at one point, she's like, I think that we're gonna be having a conversation next time you come about when he might be able to come home. And that honestly was the news that I needed to um, be able to edit the videos that you guys have already seen. I, as much as I wanted the information out there, it was really hard to relive. Um, those particular moments. And so uh, when I had this good news, I was just kind of on a high. And even though I bawled my eyes out while I was editing those, um, I had the capacity to do it because I was just picturing all the things. I was picturing like how I was gonna grow as a person um, and learn to give him insulin every day if that's what he required and what he needed. I was just gonna do whatever it took. Um, and I was really excited to get home. And so we got home and then I couldn't visit him over the weekend because the weekends are just kind of off limits there. Um, and then I got this phone call and it just rocked my world. <laughs>
but that doesn't mean that you did anything wrong because you were doing with you were staying current with the most current literature and knowledge that was available. Okay, um, I will work on getting there tomorrow, and um, hopefully he's feeling better and surprises us all. Fingers crossed. We'll be thinking about him overnight. All right. Well, thank you. Of course. Thank you. Take care. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so we got the call last night, and... Um, I almost picked up and drove last night other than I was a total disaster and couldn't function. So we got up early and Capri came with me and we're here to see Rocco and see what's going on and um, it's a little after 8 a.m. which is when they open so hopefully we have the best chance of seeing him if he made it through the night which we're really hoping so. So we just got in and uh, they're recognizing us now. <laughs> We've been here so much. And the good news is he made it through the night and sounded like he was really trying to do stuff this morning. So they're they're grabbing him for us. Can't wait to see him. So we're here with Rocco and the bottom of his beak is so much darker. It's really weird. I've never seen this before. It doesn't look as dry, but like the skin around his eyes isn't as full. It's like sunken in, it's light, it's peely on the other side. He doesn't use his one foot anymore. Um, it's where the apparatus is for the reader, for his glucose. He like doesn't use it. It's starting to look really bad and really swollen. He's looking really bad. And so now you guys can see from this side, like he has that mount on his one foot. Oh, bud. So he can barely balance, he's super quiet, he's not talking at all. And that foot, oh my gosh, that foot, I hate that. It's huge, like the toes are huge, everything's swollen. He just looks horrible, he looks horrible. And she was telling me like this is good for how he's been the last couple of days. This is super bad. Look at his beak. Do you see how dark it is underneath? Like, so not right. Oh, and he has like these spots on the top, but I can't get him to show up in camera very well. But he has like these spots. I don't even know how to explain it. I'm like, I don't know. Can barely get around at all. So hard to watch. And I just showed him to Dave and Dave thinks his quality of life right now is terrible. I agree with that. It's just a really rough realization. Bless you. He like can't even stand and balance on his own. And he's not eating unless you actually physically put it in his beak. He won't grab anything out of a bowl anymore. Oh, come on, bud, you can do it. Oh, look. Well, they told me he wouldn't grab anything out of a bowl and that you had to physically put it in his beak. <laughs> And he hadn't done it until just the second. Can you do it again? That was awesome. There's more of your favorites in there. There's more of your favorites. Can you do it again? And what's with the sneezing? The sad thing is, is that's like a an amazing sign that he took up one berry out of a bowl and fed himself. You know, kind of tells you how bad it is. Come on, can you do it again, please? Good job, Rockstar. Good job, Rockstar. Good job, bud.
just after seeing him and everything, we've decided to put him down. <laughs> There's just not enough of quality of life for him left. He can't use his feet. He's starting to lose circulation in his beak. Like, I just can't do this. I can't watch him die slowly. I can't watch him suffer. When I first got here, he was like shaking and he's not anymore. And he's just been playing with this Kleenex box adorably and pulling Kleenex out of it. And they said they haven't seen that at all. And that he's obviously really happy right now. <laughs> I'm gonna miss him so much. Oh my god, I love you so much, Rocco. I'm gonna miss you so much. <laughs> gave us Rocco. He was the most precious gift and I wouldn't take it back for the world of all the moments that he shared and and how much awareness his life is going to bring to so many people. I've already been asked by a lot of important resources through this process for the data that was collected during all of his treatment. And I know that sharing that is going to bring a better understanding for future care of toucans and understanding more about them. I feel proud that he was the first bird to ever wear these glucose monitors. Up until Rocco, they had only had those in use on cats and dogs. And so, My vet had told me that he was going to that he's going to be mentioned in the scientific journals and talked about at the conferences and just people have a lot to learn and have more options now for avian care and avian understanding. I've donated his body. By request so that they can learn more. And we're having a necropsy performed to try to collect as much information as we can. So I'll be sharing that with the whole world on whatever information that gives us. And then they'll give me his ashes that I can plant this summer to honor him. He is the best. He is the best. Thank you all for bringing him into my life. I would have never had him if it hadn't been for all of you guys literally getting me a toucan who does that. <laughs> um, please don't do that again. Um, but thank you, seriously. 
he brought so much joy to our lives. I love him a lot. I'll always love him. It sounds silly, but I kept the Kleenex box <laughs> that he played with at the vet office. <laughs>